Clavens for yourself. Galatians 3.13. It reads like this. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed or cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Let's see, Christ was a thing as Calagusan said for. Having become a curse for us. Say, I am redeemed. Say, Jesus has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Say, I am redeemed from the curse of sin. Say, I am redeemed from the curse of sickness. I am redeemed from the curse of disease. Say, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of poverty. This is the story, church. The Bible lays it clearly down. This is the gospel in a few sentences. The Bible says you are redeemed from the curse of the, the law. The Bible literally says the curse of the law was tripartite. It had to do with sin, sickness, and death, meaning spiritual death. And then the consequences therein. Poverty has to do with it. Poverty has to do with sin. Sickness has to do with sin. But the Bible says today, this morning, we are redeemed. It breaks the good news. It breaks the story. These are the headlines. This is what is breaking today. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. Say, I am redeemed. Say, I am redeemed from the curse. Say, I am redeemed from the curse of poverty. Say, my children are redeemed from the curse of sickness. Say, my husband is redeemed from the curse of disease. Wow. Hallelujah. You are redeemed. There's no truth further than that. Jesus has redeemed. He came to redeem us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us. That is the method the heavenlies used. The Bible says Jesus became a sacrifice. Came, took our shoes, stood in our place. Where my ends are when he had accepted vicarious responsibility, meaning that he got into our shoes. That's vicarious liability. I didn't do it, but I take the place of the person who did it. In other words, Jesus became sin for us who knew no sin. He became sick for us who knew no sickness. There was no sickness around him, but he took our sicknesses upon himself. Jesus became sin in the place of our sins. He became sinful. He became cursed. That's what led to his death on the cross because without sin, he could not die. Without sin, there's no death. The Bible says the wages of sin are death. In other words, without sin, you cannot die. You've got to sin first, then die. That's the pronouncement of the heavenlies. You sin, sin entered the world, then death by sin, sickness by sin. 
diseased by sin. That's why Jesus took our sin. Because God had given him to die, to death, to die for us. And he became cursed. And one day he cried, he said, Hello, hello, Lama Sabakta. Meaning that, Lord, my God, why have you forsaken me? At that moment. Still the process of redemption. So Say, I am the redeemed. Say, I am redeemed from the curse of sin. Say, I have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Say, I am redeemed from the curse of sickness. Say, I am redeemed from the curse of death. Death. Clap your hands, you are the redeemed. The Bible says he took our place. Instead of him living, he died for us. Church, that's why you are living today. That's why you are blessed today. And today, I want to tell you, we are going to share in this blessing. Whether I like it or not. Once you step foot in this church, your name is blessing. Do you hear me? There's no two ways about it. Once you enter this door, you are part and parcel of the redeeming work of Calvary. Today, redemption is going to be all over the place. Say, I am redeemed. Say, my children are redeemed. Say, my husband is redeemed. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That hanging part, I want to talk about it a little bit this morning. In other ways, or in other words, how did he redeem us? The Bible says he had to take our place. Like I told you, he, take, he took our shoes, he became sick. He moon, you know, sickness became sin. He moon, you know, sin. In other words, he agreed to be cursed. Now he was the son of God. He agreed to go on the cross. He agreed to be lifted on high. But look, the lifting up was a cursed phenomena. Because it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. In other words, cursed is everyone that is crucified. He went to the cross. And it was very heavy on him. I remember one night he had to really ask God, God, do you really seriously intend me to suffer or to drink this cup? Because he was sweating then. It was not an easy thing. He was going through hardship. And the Bible says his sweat became drops of blood. He prayed until he sweated drops of blood. Trying to fight against this thing. But listen. It was the purpose of God that he should go to the cross and die for you and me and die for your family and die for your husband and die for your children so that your household be redeemed. Today, 
We are the redeemed. Say, I am redeemed. Say, I am redeemed. Say, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord by becoming a curse for us. In other words, up he went, he was lifted on high. He suffered the crucifixion just for me and you. And that's why John says in chapter 3 of the Gospel of John, I'm reading from verse 14, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Just exactly like Moses lifted up that poisonous snake in the wilderness. So must the Son of Man be lifted up. Say Moses. Tani Moses. Say the serpent. Tani Yoga. Say the Son of Man. Tani In other words, the Bible speaks about Moses lifting up the serpent, the snake in the wilderness. And immediately after that, it speaks about the antitype. Who's the antitype here? The Bible speaks about Christ being lifted up exactly like Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness. And why was Jesus supposed to be lifted up? In other words, why was Jesus supposed to become the curse here? This, this is prophetic scripture. It tells us that in verse 15, that whoever believes in him, meaning Jesus, should not perish but have eternal life. Say eternal life. Say eternal life. Say eternal life. In order for the one that believes in Jesus not to die, not to perish, not to go to eternal condemnation, so that the one that believes in Jesus be redeemed from the curse of the Lord. The Son of Man must be lifted up. Exactly in a similar fashion that Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the wilderness. Do you, do you, do you understand what I'm telling you? Uh, are you following me so far? Okay, I just want to see how Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness. Go to Numbers 21, verse 4. The bronze serpent. Then they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And the people spoke against God and they spoke against Moses. In other words, they are in the wilderness here. It's a wilderness experience again. People may be here this morning and you've got a similar fashion. It looks like you are in the wilderness. There's nothing that is making sense around your life. It is dry as it is dry in the wilderness. Financially, you are experiencing a drought or some drought. There's no food in the house. In most often times, the lights are off. Even the electricity is off. The only thing or the only chance is concerning the motorbike, the water motorbike, because you can lock the gate so far. For that, you can lock the gate. But the electricity units, you must pay money to buy. So you've got only water so far. But I, I, I'm explaining the concept. We are in the wilderness. They were just moving in the wilderness. Up and down. And the Bible says the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. Are you discouraged? This morning. Because church, as I was reading this, the Spirit told me it's easy for people to become discouraged. What causes discouragement? In the lives of Christians, let me talk about Christians, people who know Jesus. Do you know that as a child of God, yourself can be discouraged? We 
spirit filled or not you can become discouraged educated or not you can become discouraged what puts discouragement in the lives of children of God? You are prompted to ask yourself that question. What causes people to be discouraged? Because they became discouraged this day. On the way, they became discouraged. Say they became discouraged. Say they became discouraged. On the way, they became discouraged. Be careful you don't become discouraged, my neighbor, on the way. There is a reason why they became discouraged. I'm going to read verse 5. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water. And our soul lots or hates this worthless bread. And they were speaking about bread from heaven. Bread from angels. They were calling manna worthless now. Something that God did. They were saying this miracle, we hate it now. We hate this thing. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. You know, people that are discouraged will speak against God. God will start to speak against the men of God. They'll start to blaspheme but for I'll, no reason. But I'll, I'll People that are discouraged, you see them by complaining. They like to complain. They like to murmur. They like to gossip. Then you know that this bunch, this group is a discouraged group. Oh, this person is a discouraged somebody. And they said, why did you take us out of Egypt? They were saying this to Moses. Because it's Moses that was there. God was in heaven. But they spoke against God and they spoke against the past. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water here. Say no food. Say no water. Say no food. Yes, you don't have any food. Today you don't have any water. But I say watch against this. Don't become discouraged. Because once you become discouraged, there's a danger of you speaking against God. There's a danger of you speaking against the man of God. Yeah. Haven't you met people that you knew, somebody that you were with in your CV, Tree of Life? Today, she's speaking against the church. Haven't you met somebody that you were with at Bosco, but today or these days you meet them somewhere and they are speaking rubbish with their mouth? Say discouragement. Say discouragement. Say discouraged. Say discouraged. Why did you take us out of Egypt? Moses. Look at you. Look at this pastor. At least in Egypt we were eating garlics and, uh, and, uh, and pork and all these spices. But here in the wilderness we are suffering. God for Lapa, Lange, we are just eating this worthless bread, this manna. And they forgot that manna was a bread from angels. And they forgot why were they in the wilderness. Because in the, whale, in the wilderness you are in transition. You are going somewhere. In other words, you are in school. There is no graduation without wilderness. We all have to pass the wilderness experience. Because your faith will thrive in the wilderness. It will thrive under challenges. 
That's why Joseph had to go down into the pit. Do you know the guy called Joseph? Do you know that Joseph one day was sold by his own blood brothers? Do you know that one day they wanted to kill Joseph, yes or no? Yes or no? Do you know Joseph? Do you know that Joseph was cast into the pit? by his own flesh and blood. The people who wanted to kill Joseph were not strangers. It was not heathens. It was not people from Shazafe there. It was Christians. Telling me that the people I must watch for, the people I must watch carefully watch for are Christians. Christians are dangerous people. The devil will use Christians. If I go to the bar as a man of God, if I go to Mshazafe, I am safe there. But the most unexpected place, the most unwelcome place is church. I must be careful when I'm in church. God forget in Zahoge Lenga I'm sharing this with you for free. And threw Joseph in the pit. Meaning to, to at least sell him to strangers instead of killing him. For the mercy of one brother who begged, no, let's kill him. Let's just drop him in this pit so that he dies down there. Let's not shed our own blood. Pit. And that pit was very cold. It was very dark. But think of it. I am where I am because of my own brothers. Just think of it. What is happening to me? I mean, I'm reading the mind of Joseph. What is happening to me is because of my own father's children. Look at me, I'm hungry. I'm feeling cold. I'm thirsty. But my father is waiting for me at home. These people have done this to me. Pete. God's experience. But not forgetting that everybody needs the Pete experience. Because Pete stands for P-I-T, prophets in training. You cannot be a prophet without the pit. You cannot be a strong believer without the wilderness experience. In the case of Joseph, you cannot become prime minister without the pit. So they were going through the wilderness. They became discouraged on the way. And once you become discouraged, you will start speaking against God. You will start speaking against the men of God. Those are symptoms of discouragement. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. So, they said we don't like, there's no food here, there's no water. Pastor Tulane said, we'll have money. There's no money here. Pastor said, I'll get a job. I don't have a job still. Pastor said, I'll get married by December. But I don't see any marriage here. I hate this church. Let me start looking for another church. Say no food. Say no water. Say no food. Because that's where you test the real Christian. That's, that's, where, that's when the real believer is tested. When there's no food, when there's no water, I will know the real person. Right now, because there's some food, there's some water, huh? people come, they laugh, uh, they smile, they lift their hands, they worship, they cry. Peace. Some are happy, some are jumpy. Jumpy. But take away the food, take away the water, I will know who is a real believer. It's when the lights are dark. It's when there's no food in the fridge. It's when the children are out of school. It's when your husband is dead. Then I will know who is really a true believer. We will know the strength of one's character. Clap the hands for Jesus.
So the Lord sent poisonous serpents, verse 6, among the people, and they beat the people, and many of the people of Israel died. This is the punishment. Once you fall into discouragement, once you start speaking against God, you have exposed, you have dug a grave for yourself. Once you sin, you have dug a grave. In other words, the Lord sent coronavirus. The Lord sent a pandemic. Because something bad has happened over the world. The Christians are confused. People are not doing good anymore. And God looks at this situation and says, No, I have to do something. I've got to punish this people. Because, because I cannot just allow people to misbehave, misbehave, speak against even my servants, speak against me, blaspheme blaspheme the church. I must do something here. And he sent a pandemic. Those snakes stood for an incurable disease. And they beat many people. And the Bible says many people of Israel died. Are not many people dying today? I'm asking you. Are not many people dying today? Something wrong somewhere. Sometimes you must read your Bible with, you know, extra fervency. You must dig. Because there's nothing new here on earth. Everything that is happening today, God had said it long time. It happened long time ago. There's nothing new. Thank God. Verse 7. The people, therefore the people came to Moses. I like what is happening here. And they said, we have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he takes away the serpents or the snakes from us. So Moses prayed for the people. In other words, they realized that they have sinned. Say, we have sinned. Say, we have sinned. Say, we have sinned. The greatest point in a man's life or a woman's life is when he or she realizes that I have sinned. Because once you realize that you have sinned, God's grace will start from there. The problem is the devil will cloud men's minds. He will just cover people's thinking and faculties. They will not admit to their mistakes. Have you stayed with someone in your house that cannot say sorry? Are you married to somebody who cannot even say sorry one day every time the other person is the wrong party? They never wrong. They, they never do mistakes. That's what the devil does. But here they came to Moses and they said, We have sinned. Say, We have sinned. They said, We have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to us or pray to the Lord that he takes away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, make a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. In other words, lift it on a pole. Lift it up. We paramise. Make a bronze serpent and lift it up. Don't forget, we are going there. Exactly as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. Yes. And there was a purpose of lifting up the snake, that snake, and lifting up the antitype, Jesus Christ. There's a reason why he should be lifted up. And I will read. He says, make a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. Lift it up on a pole. And it shall be that everyone who is beaten, everyone who is infected with this coronavirus, when he looks at it, what? This serpent. When he looks at this bronze serpent, he shall live or shall live. In other words, God says, make a cursed thing. Exactly the curse that is on the people, the sickness that is biting the people and they are dying. Make a picture of it. Make a bronze serpent because they are being killed by poisonous snakes. Make a picture of those snakes and lift it up on a pole. Why? So that anyone who is beaten by it 
shall look at this bronze serpent on the cross or on the pole and listen to what God says. He says, he shall live. Say, he shall live. Say, he shall live. Church, back there, please say it. Say, he shall live. Say he shall live. Say he shall live. You must say it. The prefect will write down your name when uh, you're sitting next to a prefect there. Depends for Jesus. Everybody who looks at this bronze serpent. A picture of a curse that was placed on a pole. The Bible says he shall live. And don't forget, Jesus was made a curse for us. Because it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a pole. Or, or a tree. Now you're getting this. We're coming closer home. Eh? You are getting the picture now. Because God is taking us somewhere. I just want to finish quickly. So he says, everyone who is beaten, when he looks at this snake or it shall live. Verse 9. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was. I like that. If a serpent had beaten anyone, in other words, people, even those people that are already infected, it doesn't mean that the serpent will not bite you completely. I mean, some people will be beaten by the coronavirus. They become infected. You can be affected by the pandemic, but it doesn't mean that it's the end. God has forgotten you. No. Even when you become sick, God will deliver you. God shall deliver your children. And I like saying it like this or putting it like this. Your sickness is not like any other sickness. Your ulcers are not just like those ulcers out there. You are a child of the deliverer. God is your healer. Say he's my healer. Say he is my healer. Say he is my redeemer. Say I am redeemed from the curse of the Lord. Say I am redeemed from the curse of sickness. Clap your hands. Some people have gotten it. I can even stop preaching here. Some people understand now. But let us finish it. Moses made that serpent. He made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. Don't forget, the pole stands for the cross of Jesus Christ. Because exactly as Moses lifted up the snake, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And listen, and so it was, or it followed, that if a snake, or if that pandemic had beaten anyone, if anyone had been infected, the Bible says, when he looked, at the bronze serpent, he lived. I want to read it in the real, real King James. This is the new King James. Listen to the King James. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it on a pole. Or okay, verse 9, And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld, or when he looketh, and the serpent of brass, he lived. Say he lived. That word look at is in the present continuous tense. 
In other words, this stands for the people who will look and continue looking. Whatever is happening around them, whatever is happening in the body, whether you are feeling hot, cold, or warm, whether your stomach is running, what, what, blah, blah, blah. Whether you are throwing up. Whether you are weak. Whether you've got a fever. Continue looking. Continue looking. Whosoever shall look. The Bible says, He shall live. He shall live. Clap your hands. Church, this is a steady absorbing gaze. That snake was placed on a pole. That bronze serpent was placed on that high pole podium there so that everybody could have eye contact whatever is happening around you maybe your husband didn't greet you that morning you still continue to look whether you've got money or not in your pockets, you still continue to look. Everybody that looketh, the Bible says he shall live. Say he shall live. Say he shall live. But what do we do? We, we just look for a brief moment. Oh. Pastor said I must pray this prayer. Ah, they prayed for me in church today. When you reach home, things change. You feel symptoms. In the body. And you take your eyes off the serpent or of the bronze serpent. What will happen to you? Will you live? I'm asking the question. Will you live? People take their eyes from Jesus. Christians today, they run helter-skelter. They seek help from witch doctors. They go to fetish priests. Because witch doctors nowadays, they wear suits. If you are not careful, you will fall into a trap. Because witch doctors previously, they would not wash, they would not bath. Their hair was messed up. You would know that this person is a witch doctor. And they were walking barefooted. And mostly they would wear maybe some traditional regalia. But today you can't tell a witch doctor. They make up, they rouge their mouth. So it is easy for Christians to go to those people for counseling, for consultation. After that, you pay 7,000. Am I right? Maybe I'm speaking something I'm not to say a true of life. Is it allowed to, to, to preach like this? Is it allowed here? Yeah? Are you comfortable? Say, everyone that looketh. The Bible says, everyone that looketh shall live. But people take away their eyes from Jesus. And they start looking at other things. Church, Jesus is our bronze serpent. I say Jesus is our bronze serpent. Don't take your eyes from Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't take your eyes from Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12. Oh I'm, 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 I'm prompted to read this scripture. Are you there in Hebrews chapter 12? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. It says, looking unto who? Looking unto Jesus. 
Say looking unto Jesus. Say looking unto Jesus. Say looking unto Jesus. I like re reading it with Hebrews chapter 3. Same book of Hebrews. Look at chapter 3. I want to read it from this nice Bible, the message. Chapter 3 of Hebrews, chapter 3 from the message. So my dear Christian friends, companions, companions in following this call to the heights. He says, take a good hard look at Jesus. Wow. I think the King James says, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession. Consider Jesus. Say, consider Jesus. Say, take a hard look at Jesus. Say, consider Jesus. Otherwise, we've got to look at this bronze serpent, people. Who is our bronze serpent? Jesus. Put your eyes there. Don't take them off. Don't start contemplating things. Because you are the redeemed. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. We are redeemed from the curse of sickness and disease. We are redeemed from the curse of poverty. Say, I am redeemed. Say, I am redeemed. From the curse of sickness. Say, I am redeemed. From the curse of poverty. Say, I am redeemed. From the curse of sin. Clap hands for yourself. You are the redeemed. No reason for fear. Good is that for Sewasaba. No reason to be afraid. Good is that for Sewasaba. No reason to abscond church. Good is that for Sewasaba. Because now you are afraid. No reason for fear. What do they call these? They call them. They call them super spreaders. Clevens for hell. Give me high five. <laughs> she doesn't want to give me high five. She wants to elbow me now. I say, give me high five. They call our church gathering super spreaders now. That is nonsense. Clevens for Jesus Christ. Shailani Jesus Christ. We have our bronze serpent. That's the reason the people died out of that incurable, dis incurable sickness. Because people have seen, people sinned. But our God made provision for his own. He told Moses to lift up that bronze serpent. I see God making provision for you today. For your children. For your husband. For your wife. You're supposed to lift up your eyes. And take a hard look at that Jesus on the pole. The Bible says, consider Jesus. The Bible says, Look at Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Don't tell me, why did we go out from Egypt? At least in Egypt, I was eating garlic, I was eating meat. But now I'm going to die in this wilderness. You look like a discouraged somebody. Look, we had to leave Egypt. We had to flee from our previous life. That was a life of hard bondage. Our captors put hard bondage over us. The Egyptians ill-treated you. If you want to read it, you can read it in the book of Exodus. They ill-treated you. In Deuteronomy, yes. They put yokes over your shoulders. Your children were slaves to the devil. Your husband was a slave to the bottle. If you look at your life today, God has done some things for you. You are selling your body. You are stealing cars. 
But God changed your life. God van kunkulu wa ikutula imbilo ya. Don't tell me it was better in Egypt. Ngamtshela ukuthi bekungcono ikipi. Don't tell me you want to go back now. Ongangtshela ukuthi sawufuna kuyela emva manje. Clap your hands for Jesus. Shaila ni Jesus Christ dani. I don't want to give I don't want to go back to those witch doctors. Angifuna ukuyela emuva kuleta tinyama. I don't want to go back to a life of gambling. Angifuna ukuyela imbilo yena emadayisi. Should we go back? Mela sibuyela. Should we go back? Sijika sibuyela emvana. Do you want to eat those garlics again? Ngabe nifuna kudlala bobo garlic futhi na. Do you want those meats in Egypt? Ngabe ufuna leta tinyama tasegibitha na. Hmm? Wow. People are remembering their old girlfriends, their old boyfriends. Now they want to go back. Shame on you. Look at your neighbor, say shame on you. Say shame on you, my neighbor. Shame on you. There's something that Moses said in Exodus. Because people are busy, they are looking at the status quo. They are in a drought, dry, financial drought. And look what Jonah said. Jonah said, They that consider lying vanities will forsake their own mercy. You read Jonah chapter 2. Jonah says, Those that look or focus at lying vanities, they will forsake their own deliverance. In other words, if you are busy looking at that situation, no money. You are looking at the symptoms in your body. There's no food, there's no water. The next thing, you'll become discouraged. You'll speak against God. The Bible says when Jonah fainted, when his spirit fainted upon him, he said, I remember the Lord. Things were not working out for Jonah. He said, I remember the Lord and I will look at thy holy temple. Because why? They that look at lying vanities forsake their own healing. They forsake their own deliverance. Your symptoms are just lying vanities. You're going to be healed from this coronavirus. Irregardless of the fever that you are feeling now. You are going to be healed from this cervix cancer. Something will happen to your husband. That man is going to be delivered. You are going to find another job again. You are going to get married. Things are going to happen in your life. Just continue looking at the bronze serpent. The curse will cancel the curse. The cursed one will cancel the curse in your life. You see, like things attract, like attract. In other words, that curse over there will attract the curse that is in you and he will become sin who knew no sin. He will become sickness who knew no sickness. He will become sick with coronavirus who had no coronavirus Lord. and you will become free Lord. free free as a dove you are going to walk out here and your children are going to be delivered do you get my point the bible says in first peter him who knew no sin became sin for us hallelujah Hallelujah. And it says, by his wounds we are healed. Say, I am healed. Say, I am blessed. Say, I am redeemed. Say, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord by being made a curse for us. Clap your hands if you understand. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exodus 14. Verse 13. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. See what? See the salvation of the Lord. In other words, see that bronze serpent. People are busy seeing useless things, looking at many things. The Bible says, 
You need a steady absorbing gaze. He that looketh shall live. In other words, stand still. Don't be afraid. Only see the just one on the poor. See the salvation of the Lord. Consider Jesus. This Bible said, take a hard look on Jesus. Take a hard look. Say, take a really hard look. You see, you can't look at Jesus and look at your body that is sick at the same time. You can't look at Jesus and look to which doctors at the same time. Do you, do you get my point? The Bible says, look at the bronze serpent. Look at the cursed one. Take a hard look at Jesus. Moses says, look at the salvation of the Lord. See the salvation of the Lord which you will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more. Wow. The sickness that you see again, I mean today, you shall see it again no more. The poverty that you see today, you shall see it again no more. That is, if you look at the salvation of the Lord, if you look at the bronze serpent, If you take a hard look on Jesus, he died for you. He was cursed for you. He became sick for you. Don't think God is not seeing this pandemic. He knows about Corona. Way, way, way back. He planned for Corona. And you are standing here by His grace. We are not trusting on the vaccine. For you who think you are going to run to the vaccine, anything is possible. My Bible teaches me to look at the bronze serpent. Church, here's your vaccine. Here's your vaccine. This is the vaccine. Lift your eyes. Take a hard look on Jesus. Take a hard look on Jesus. Say, take a hard look on Jesus. Clap your hands. I'm not lying to you. People are dying in Maputo because of the vaccine. All ladies are dying. The other day they were telling us five people died in Lesotho. So don't take it light. Am I scaring some of you? No, I don't want you to get scared. I'm not pronouncing on something that I don't know. I'm not against the vaccine. But I'm telling you, here's the vaccine. Here's the bronze serpent. Lifted for us. Exactly as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted. And the Bible says, everyone that looketh, even thou a snake had beaten that man, the Bible says he lived. Say, I shall live. Say, I shall live. Say, I shall, live. Say, I shall recover. Say, I will recover from every sickness. Say, my children shall recover. Say, my children shall be healed. Say, my husband shall be delivered. Say, my wife shall be delivered. Clap your hands and stand on your feet. Shayani, tan, tan, tan.